You know, Thomas Paine one time said that to argue with someone who has renounced reason is like trying to administer medicine to the dead. And I think about that quote all the time when I'm sitting in this chair trying to reason with MAGA Republicans. I feel like I'm administering medicine to the dead because no matter what we say, they have refused to accept facts. They have refused to accept evidence. You know, we've talked a whole lot about how Donald Trump ushered people into the political conversation that knew nothing about the government or how it actually works. And we talked about how he ushered people into Christianity that knew nothing about the church or how that works. But he also ushered in the conspiracy theorists who refuse to see the truth when it's put right in front of them. And maybe all those things go hand in hand at the end of the day, but there are people who will just completely ignore facts and science and logic and reason. And no matter what you say, they have a built-in scapegoat and they have a built-in defense system that makes them the winner in their world. They can't lose in their arguments because they've already convinced themselves that that's not possible and that the only way that they could ever lose is if everything was a hoax against them. And that is a very hard type of person to argue with. And I want to show you a classic case of what I'm talking about because here is Congressman Jeff Van Drew, and he's being questioned and asked, does he have a problem with poor people donating to Donald Trump? And this was his answer. Take a look at this. Okay, well, listen, I'm sure the Democratic uh, side will say that a lot of their money comes from the more grassroots. But let's keep going um, here because once the federal uh, contribution limit is maxed out, the remainder of money raised will go for from Trump uh, tonight will go to the RNC. You've got state political parties and to the Save America PAC, which, as you well know, helps pay Trump's astronomical legal bills. So Trump himself, he's a billionaire. But are you okay with campaign donations going towards his legal bills? Because you just mentioned that he does have those smaller donors who are using their hard-earned money to try to support his political aspirations. Understood. So you got to realize, I believe the smaller donors, just like the big donors, realize that Donald Trump isn't being prosecuted. He's being persecuted, man. This is unheard of in American political or judicial or legal history. It really is. And so people understand that. Now, is it unheard that. of because, but let me ask you, sir, is it unheard of because this is the first time you have a former president uh, stepping into the, the, the arenas, if you will, that he has stepped into? Maybe that's why it's unprecedented because we've never had a, a former president uh, behave this way. No, it's unprecedented because there's so much at risk. It's unprecedented because, quite frankly, the left is really concerned that he has a real shot here. He's going to win, and they are afraid of that. So they are using every mechanism possible, whether it's ultra prosecutors, attorneys general, uh, and just to go after this man for things. What's so funny to me is how they can't even entertain the idea that maybe Donald Trump is being prosecuted because of how he behaved. They can't even entertain the idea that, you know what, maybe this guy broke the law. Maybe this guy's a con artist. Maybe this guy's a grifter. They can't even entertain the idea. Do you realize the level of arrogance that takes to, to believe that this guy is perfectly squeaky clean and just how delusional you truly have to be to think that this guy is just squeaky clean and he's being persecuted? But that's the narrative they chose. Donald Trump had a choice to make. When he lost the election, he could have walked out there like a real man, stood up with a backbone and said, you know what? The American people have spoken. They've chose Joe Biden as the president. So I don't agree with their decision. I'm going to be back in four years to remind you of why I was the better choice and why you made a mistake. Had he done that and just walked away, he would have saved us all the trouble and he would have saved himself all the trouble that he's went through. But no, he had to go out there and create this narrative that he's being persecuted, and it's all because of his ego. Now, these rich people, they know what's going on, and they're selling that narrative to the poor people. When he talks about rich people donating and poor people donating, rich people are donating because Donald Trump's going to give them tax breaks. Donald Trump's going to be their best friend. Poor people are donating because they've been duped into believing that he's being persecuted. They've been duped into thinking that they're going to come after them next. You know, he always loves to go around saying, well, if they could do this to me, you know, they could do it to you. They're not going to do it to you. Okay, if you are just the average Joe living here in Appalachia, driving back and forth to work today, they're not going to come after you for trying to steal an election. 
They're not going to come after you for having documents you weren't supposed to have and bragging about it. You're, none of the things, they're not going to come after you for any of those reasons. But MAGA always has that built-in defense. It's already there. They've already got the answer for it. And I want to show you another clip here of Jeff Van Drew because when he's asked about the elections, well, it's pretty apparent that if Biden wins, it was rigged. If Trump wins, it was fair and square. Take a look at this. Congressman, in the last minute, you just said Donald Trump is going to win. If Donald Trump does not win, will you and the rest of the Republicans and the supporters of Donald Trump accept that he did not win and that the fix is not in? Because that's very crucial for us to have uh, fair and safe elections. If the elections are fair and safe, I always support the result of the election. If they are not, I have concerns. And the bottom line is, I don't think so about- So if Trump wins, it's fair. If Biden wins, it's uh, not fair. Is that what you're saying, Congressman? No, Arthel, that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is, I don't even think about him not winning because in my mind, and many Americans' minds, including middle of the road, independents and Democrats, the future of our nation and of the Republic is at risk. This is not about saving the Republican Party. This is about saving the Republic. Now, I'd just like to remind everybody that Donald Trump did this exact same thing back in 2020. He said, the only way that I lose is if it's rigged. That's the only way I lose. He started that back in 2020 before the 2020 election ever happened. And he did that so that when he lost, he had a scapegoat. He had a, he had a way out. Had he, had he won, I promise you, he wouldn't have asked for any recounts. As a matter of fact, wasn't it him that said, just stop counting if I'm ahead? I mean, that's how blatantly obvious he was with the entire thing. He already sowed those seeds. He's been sowing them ever since, and they're sowing them again. If Biden wins, we're going to have to question that. That's unfair. And it wouldn't matter if Biden won in the biggest landslide in history. It still wouldn't make a difference. They wouldn't believe it to be true because they base everything off of the political theater that Donald Trump plays out in front of them. They go to their WWE-style events, and they see the signs, and they see the flags, and they see all the camaraderie they have with those folks. And they all stand up there, and they all pump their fists, and they sing along with the January 6th terrorists, and they, they feel like that they're these victims in the world. And they, they feel such a strong sense of you know unity at those events that they can't imagine that there's people out there looking over at them going, yep, that's not for me. But trust me, there was more of us in 2020 that said, that's not for me. And there's just as many, if not more, that's going to sit here the next time and go, yep, that's not for me. That's not what I'm about. When I look over and I see the way Donald Trump carries himself, not only as a politician, but as a human being, he's somebody that I do not want to be associated with or want my name attached to at all. He's somebody that I want to stay as far away from his ideology and his way of thinking as possible. He's not someone I want to entertain in no way, shape, or form. And I'll gladly cast my vote for Joe Biden because Joe Biden is the better man in every sense of the phrase. That's not even a contest to me. It's not even close. It's not even really up for debate, in my opinion. You know, there have been times before uh, where I voted for someone who I felt really strongly about, but I could still see the other side. You know, I, I could. I I'll, I'll be brutally honest with you. And I never thought I would admit this or say this out loud, but I'll go ahead. In 2004, I was 100% behind John Kerry. I thought George W. Bush was one of the worst presidents. I still think he does. And I, I still don't think we should ever give him a pass just because he ate candy with Michelle Obama, okay? He was a terrible president. I was 100% behind John Kerry. But I do remember thinking in the back of my mind, I can see people not wanting to change presidents during wartime. I can see why some people think we need to be fighting this fight. I, I get it. I disagree with it, but I get it. But this is the first time in my life where I'm going, I don't even get it. I don't even, I don't even see how it's close. I don't even see how there's a, there's a debate to be had. And when he wants to talk about that Demo Democrats and independents and moderates see that he's being persecuted, <laughs> trust me, I have not talked to an independent yet who felt that way. I've not talked to one who said, yeah, I'm starting to kind of lean that way because they see through it. They see through it for what it really is. And like I said, to the ones who's out there in, caught up in the political theater and just really believe in this to be true, well, it's going to be a big shock to them when they wake up the next day after the election. It's going to be the same thing all over again. We're going to hear them cry that it was rigged. 
Why? Because they've been saying it ever since 2020, and they've said it all year this year. They'll say it right up to the final moment. But if, but, but if Donald Trump was to win by the slightest, slimmest margin ever, if he just barely edged over the finish line, just ever so close, oh, he won, oh, he blew it out of the water, see, it was fair, it's fair, everybody go home, it's okay. That's the kind of people we're dealing with, and those type of people are who's fired up and ready to vote. So to the ones of us who have been on the side of sanity and on the side of reason and on the side of logic and facts and evidence, we just have to remember you got to go back further. You got to go back and remember how, how sick to your stomach you felt when you realized that Hillary Clinton wasn't going to be president and Donald Trump was. You have to realize that sick feeling you felt when you saw the Supreme Court get stacked in the right wing's favor. You have to remember that sick feeling you felt as you watched Roe versus Wade be overturned. You have to remember all the things that led us to this point as we go into this election. And like I said, it's not even close to me. It's not even up for a debate. And fuck The Rock, okay? I'm a wrestling fan, but to hell with that guy for saying, well, I endorsed Biden before, but I can't this time. I, okay? So so that's the alternative. You, you're, you're, all those things, you can't endorse this guy, but I mean, you're, you're telling me that's still on the table? That, that, that what Trump has to offer is on the table? I don't even see how it's close. I never will. And I'm sure there's people, you know, on the MAGA side of the fence, if they've made it to this point in the video, they're going, well, Brando's been gaslit. I know they'll throw it back at us, but at the end of the day, we do have the proof, the evidence, the facts is right there in our corner. And they may live in a delusional world or an alternate reality where they won't accept it, but that doesn't mean we go quietly. That doesn't mean we stop talking. Just when you stand up and you have the truth on your side, you speak that truth and you don't back down and you keep saying it. Win, lose, or draw, you keep telling the truth. You have to because at the end of the day, that's all we got left.